I know you all have been seeing the headlines and it's blowing up your social media feeds. The new weight loss drugs, everybody's talking about Ozempic, Wigovi, Manjaro. Will they change the game on the health battle? Hundreds of millions are fighting every day. More than two billion adults, two billion adults, that's one quarter of the world's population, are overweight or obese. And it's estimated that by 2035, that number is gonna reach more than half the world. Today, in most countries, y'all, obesity, I didn't know this until preparing for this show, obesity kills more people than malnutrition. I, that was a while for me too. So you all know I've been on this journey for most of my life. My highest weight was 237 pounds. I don't know if there is another public person whose weight struggle has been exploited as much as mine over the years. So I am ready for this conversation. With me, our top experts and this audience has some interesting questions and opinions. And I know many of you watching have on your mind as well. So questions like, is being overweight a lack of willpower or is obesity a medically treatable disease? Are these new drugs a miracle cure, a silver bullet for weight loss? Can anybody take them? Are they safe? That's what we all wanna know. So wanna introduce our panel, Dr. Fatima Cody, Stanford. She goes by Dr. Fatima, is an associate professor of medicine and pediatrics at Harvard Medical School and an obesity medicine physician scientist at the Massachusetts General Hospital Weight Center. Dr. Rachel Goldman, who goes by Dr. Rachel, <laughs> is a licensed psychologist in private practice and clinical assistant professor in the Department of Psychiatry at the NYU Grossman School of Medicine. Dr. Melanie J is a primary care doctor board certified in obesity medicine and the director of the NYU Langone Comprehensive Program on Obesity. She also works with veterans at the New York Harbor Veterans Affairs. And Seema Sistani is the chief executive officer of Weight Watchers. I've been an investor and on the board of Weight Watchers since 2015. I invited Sima today because I know many people wanna know where Weight Watchers stands on this issue. We're gonna to get to that. So, so happy to have you all here. So happy to be here. Okay, let's start with this. 10 years ago, the uh, American Medical Association declared obesity a chronic disease. Now, a lot of us miss that, but many people can't wrap their brain around what that really means. So Dr. Fatima, I read that you played a central role in that designation a decade ago. Can you define for us what it means that obesity is a disease? Absolutely, why do we call obesity a disease? We call it disease because there is malfunction in how the body is operating. And there's two primary pathways of the brain that actually regulate weight. One pathway is our anorexigenic pathway. When we hear anorexigenic, what do we hear? We have less food intake and less food storage. Now, we have a different pathway of the brain, and when patients have overweight and obesity, they're typically upregulating the orexigenic pathway of the brain. Orexigenic is the opposite of anorexigenic. That pathway supports storage of adipose. Adipose is a fancy word for fat. Now, I just threw out a lot of vocabulary there. Yeah. But that tells us that there is dysfunction in how the body is regulating weight. And it's going on in our brains and it's influenced by the world around us. Our genetics, development, environment, behavior all play a role in our body's dysfunction or dysregulation of our adipose, that organ that is fat. So what I'm hearing is that it's a brain thing. Yes. And this is a question. Uh, I remember many years ago on the Oprah show, I don't know, decades ago now, when I was first having this conversation trying to explain to the public why alcoholism was a disease. And many people did not believe that alcoholism was a disease. They just thought people over drink and that why don't you just put the bottle down? So how is this somehow relatable to that? Because is every, is every, alcohol, every person that overdrinks is not an alcoholic. Every person that overeats is not necessarily uh, uh, have, have obesity as, as a disease. Absolutely. Can you explain that? Why for some, they're just overeaters and some it's a disease because of the brain thing, right? Absolutely. Well, it's about how much we take in and how much we store. So we all have those friends. My husband is here in the audience. He's this friend of mine who can eat whatever he wants and he doesn't really store that. And you're like, how is that even possible? Uh huh. And then we have those people that look at pizza and they're like, my gosh, I just looked at it and I feel like I stored it. Yeah. 
Where are you, husband? Um, husband is in the back corner over there. Yeah, husband has a name. Thank Corey. you. Corey. Corey. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Corey can eat apple pie at 11 o'clock at night. And he's able to do this. His body defends a very lean set point. He's uh -huh. able to eat what he wants and his body just defends that lean set point. If I were to do the exact same behaviors, I would store more excess adipose. My body is more predisposed to storing more fat. Damn sure mine is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that the word I've been looking for, yes. adipose? Yes. yes. I'm an adipose <laughs> storer. <laughs> Okay, all right, all right. So that is a, that is a scientific fact. That's a scientific fact. That some fact. people's bodies operate differently than others. We can accept that, right? Yes, we can yeah, see yeah. that. Absolutely. And for those of us who are adipose storers, mm -hmm. no matter how many times, because you all have watched me diet and diet and diet and diet, it, it's a recurring thing. Absolutely. Because my body always seems to want to go back to a certain weight. 